This is Oxford. The great debate about evolution happened here in the Natural History Museum in 1860. Everyone knows the story. Thomas Huxley made a fool of Samuel Wilberforce. Huxley won a great victory for the forces of science over the backwards forces of religion. So who were the players in the great debate? Who was Thomas Huxley? He, he devoted his life really to um, sort of uh, constructing an identity that would become what we would call a scientist. And uh, he, he was a, a very good uh, comparative anatomist, morphologist. But he was also a dissenter and from a working class background, and so he did not have the connections or the, uh, the social political uh, experience that would allow him to sort of gain the fast track to a scientific position, which is what he wanted, and, and he couldn't get it, and that was very frustrating for him. Um, he thought of, he uh, applied for jobs overseas. And he was not convinced that you know a scientific career could be could be possible in England, and so that was very frustrating. He was very frustrated by the the patronage system. And what about Samuel Wilberforce? Who was he? Then he was to be followed by the Right Reverend Samuel Wilberforce, Bishop of Oxford, son of William Wilberforce who'd abolished the slave trade. Sam is not the Sam of legend. The real Samuel Wilberforce was 53 years old. The brilliant, and most, perhaps most superb orator on the bench of the Church of England. Famous controversialist, famous arguer, deeply conceiving humanitarian causes. The House of Lords, the lecture platform, churches, Sam would pull a crowd. If you'd have had Sam speaking at the South Pole, he'd have had a thousand penguins coming to listen to him. He was that kind of man of power. He also had a great sense of humour. He was often nicknamed Soapy Sam. And he actually went along with that name. Now, Soapy today, we might think, was a bit insulting. No, in those days, Soapy meant smooth. It meant sophisticated. In fact, you might say he was, in modern parlance, cool Sam. He himself is going to speak about Darwin and about the new origin of species. Now, who is this man? What's he know about science? He's 53. And he's not an old fogey. I discovered something when I was researching Slaying the Dragons, which I had never come across before, and I don't think anybody else had. For 15 years, in 1860, Samuel Wilberforce had been a fellow of the Royal Society. He had been a member of the nation's leading scientific society. And also to check at university registers here in Oxford, and we have our registers back to the Middle Ages here. I found that he had taken at Oriel College as an undergraduate, 30 years before, a first class honours degree in mathematics. He was interested in maths, physics, astronomy, all the sciences of his day. He knew John Herschel well, the famous astronomer. But I found occasions in Herschel's diary where he mentions dining alongside the Bishop of Oxford at the Athenaeum Club in London. He knew physiologists and other scientists. He moved in a world of scientists. So Wilberforce is not coming to this situation as an ignorant buffoon. People often picture Samuel Wilberforce as an ignorant old man. Nothing could be further from the truth. He had a first-class degree in mathematics from Oxford, he was a fellow of the Royal Society, he was well informed about scientific matters, and he was a great public speaker. Next time, we will look at what really happened in the Great Debate. <laughs>